when we develop a program we need to define the preconditions post conditions as well as exceptions when the conditions are violated a preconditions basically is a statement for the state of any parameters and instance variables that the method is going to access so think of the case when we need to get the rate f uh, for someone who would like to get a loan the input to the method is credit score if the credit score is high then the rate is low and vice versa we would want to limit credit score in between 300 and 850 and that is the precondition the post condition is basically a statement that describes the state of the parameters and instance variables that the method has modified in this case the rate greater than zero is the post condition so in our method we write the precondition and the post condition in the three double quotes however writing the preconditions in the documentation like that doesn't prevent users from violating so here we need to enforce preconditions with exceptions as you can see in the code example if credit score is greater than 850 or less than 300 we raise uh, er uh, an exception uh, value error saying uh, credit score is invalid now um, talking about testing our program testing basically is to search for program errors to make sure the code works correctly so here uh, testing code for correctness would mean if we fit the method with inputs that fall within some specified limits then the correct program would produce the expected outputs now we talked about three approaches for choosing test data the hypothesis approach would mean we feed the program with it push until it breaks and then fix the works and then we call it correct however this approach is not very um, effective in the black box approach we partition the inputs into several uh, a number of clusters we may have clusters with normal inputs and cluster with abnormal inputs at the output we would get the expected results for normal inputs as well as abnormal inputs uh, the idea is that uh, we have um, a number of clusters and the data in each cluster are similar then if the code works correctly with a set of values um, in a cluster then it would work so well for other values in the same cluster also other uh, values on the boundary between clusters are tested however using this approach we may overlook some clusters and the number of clusters may be very large and we may not consider all of them this approach is called the black box approach because we don't care about the content of the, uh, of the method in the third approach um, called the white box approach we examine the code and then from there formulate the test data however this approach may be very difficult we may combine um, the white box and the black box approaches uh, for testing why do we need to test the code? testing is to put in, is for protecting um, our code from bad input from users also program mistakes so that we can find errors early in the coding process we have unit testing, integration testing acceptance testing and regression testing how do we do unit testing? this is about writing code to create an object of the desired type and then we run a series of methods and subject the object to a thorough workout after unit testing then integration testing can be done this is to confirm that all the classes can work together properly acceptance testing is to test under conditions that are identical to the conditions where it is used and finally regression testing which is performed when the code is repaired or extended 
How do we do init testing in Python? Python has a library called init test, and the test case class has a method, and actually a number of methods for assertions, such as assert equal, assert true, and assert false. Assert raises, which is going to be used um, often to raise exceptions. Also, setup and teardown methods. Those are used to define instructions to execute before and after each test. A unit test consists of a set of uh, test cases for a given class. Each test case is each test case basically um, just a method to run test on a method, and the tests are in the form of uh, assertions. Sometimes unit tests are also used in uh, integration testing. Let's look at an example. The first line of the code import unit test, which is a library for unit testing. Then we have the class solution. There is one single method add in the solution, uh, the class solution, which takes two uh, parameters in addition to self, and it returns the sum of uh, sum of the parameters. Then for unit testing, we define um, the class uh, test add. This class inherits from unit test dot test case. Um, don't forget this. Then we create a test. Basically, this is a method, namely test. And we may have a number of tests. This test uh, runs one single test. Basically, first uh, it creates um, an object based on the class solution. And then the uh, assert equal method. Check if the result of adding 3 and 4 is equal to 7. If it is not equal to 7, then in the error we will see the message should be 7. If the test runs through, then in the result, what we see is just a dot. One dot here is actually indicating that uh, the single test runs through. We may have multiple tests, and though multiple tests would give multiple dots. Otherwise, if something is wrong, then the result returns false. 